And we are live. Are we live, Annika? Do re mi fa sol la ti do. <laughs> Have to grab the boobs there. That's how I do it. Do. Ahoy there! If you're watching this video, it's probably because someone has given you a mystery bottle to blind taste, and you're probably thinking, well, what is the best way to do some blind tasting? And I'm here to tell you how to do it not like a song. So, talking about blind tasting, the issue is, is that there are so many documentaries and movies around where sommeliers are able to call the exact crew, vintage, and even specific plot of a domain. That's just not realistic for the rest of us. 99% of us drinking wines are never gonna know that. If you can, good on you. But for the rest of us shit munchers, we're gonna have to do it the normal way. So what is the normal way? Well. It's quite important to lower your expectations. I know that's what people say in the dating game, but really, you need to lower your expectations about trying to nail down a specific domain or a vintage. Just say that is not part of the game. You can still play that part, but don't play it in this version. Instead, try and go for the grape and the country. Once you've lowered your expectations in that way, you'll find that you're able to enjoy blind tasting in a whole new, more fun way. Because if you can get the grape and the country, and that's the top prize, then you're gonna feel pretty good when you do it. Of course, afterwards, you can then go ahead and try and get a specific domain, a vintage, or a burgundy crew if you really feel like having a punt. At the end of the day, blind tasting is meant to be fun. Don't get too serious about it. Don't try and put people down if they're not gonna get the right answer. It's not about that. It's about having fun, but you're also gonna really, really improve your palate as well. Because when you're trying a wine, not knowing anything about the producer or the label or where it's from, you're really gonna actually work your brain and your palate to think about it a lot more. So remember, if you're trying a blind bottle, you don't need to actually call the exact domain or the crew or the vintage. If you can just try and get a little bit of thought going as to what it could be, then you're gonna have a lot more fun doing it. In this video, we're gonna be giving you some prompter questions so that you can actually do this at home with your mystery bottle and think about certain elements which might lead you to the right direction. But again, don't worry if you don't get it wrong. It's all fun and it's all learning. Keep in mind that with natural wines, with their native yeast, it's definitely gonna be harder to call a natural wine than a conventional one. There are a couple of rules that you wanna remember when you're doing blind tasting. And the first one is really important, especially if you've been given a bottle by an awesome wine shop, like morenaturalwine.com. It's important to remember to never ever look at the cork. And that's actually a bit more challenging than you might think, because you're so used to looking at the cork as you pull it out, and it goes towards your face because you might want to smell to see if it's corked. That's a habit that us wine drinkers have and you need to make sure to not do it. Here's me opening a bottle of wine properly. Paper. Get away, cork, I don't want to see you. Remember, don't throw it towards the other guests because otherwise they'll see the information on the cork as well. Once you have your natural wine bottle in your lovely packaging, be sure to give it a bit of room so that you don't get the paper wet. Glug, 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 glug. Ah, and relax. Now everyone has their glass. What a lovely time this is. Ah, was there traffic on the way here? Yeah? Okay. Kids doing okay? Good. You haven't had a sip yet already, have you? That's cheating. So, now that you have not seen any information on the cork, you can go ahead and have a little whiff of your wine. On to the second rule. Now, this is really important, and a lot of people won't tell you this. Trust your gut. Well, maybe everyone will tell you that. Trust your gut and trust your palate, because often your first instinct is actually gonna be bang on the kind of region that you're thinking of. Remember, don't think what domain or region this could be. Think about country and grape. That's the best way to do this. Oh. So I'm automatically gonna get some, some vibes here on the nose. There's a little bit of spice on this wine here. It's a light wine, I can tell. It's not exactly gonna be a big uh, fruit bomb. You can definitely smell it's natural, which I like. <sighs> oh yeah, that is tickety-boo. Ah, there are a couple of grapes in my mind, which I'm pretty sure this could be. 
And because of those grapes and where they're grown, I've also got an idea of the country that this is probably from. Whether you're drinking a white or red wine, think about it carefully. Is this a grape that you might have had before? Is it a Pinot Noir? Could it be a Gamay? A Cabernet Sauvignon? Something big like a Malbec maybe. If you're looking at a white wine, you might notice that Chardonnay is a grape that kind of leans towards a softer, rounder mouthfeel, while Sauvignon Blanc tends to have a bit more acidity, a bit more of a sharper kick to it. If you have a white wine in front of you, does it lean towards in either of these directions? And if you have a red wine in front of you, do you feel like it's more on the lighter or on the heavier side? Maybe that gives you an idea about the sort of grape that it could be. Now that we've thought about grapes, have you got one in mind that maybe you think this grape could be? What's your gut telling you? Keep that in mind and now let's think about the country. Countries are quite interesting because you're going to have your hot climate and your cold climate. Now, unless you are trained in wine, no one expects you to know the difference between those. And that's not what blind tasting is about if you want to have fun with it. The more you learn, the more you will be able to nail these down. But really, have a think about whether this wine reminds you of a wine that you've perhaps had in a hot country, like Italy or Spain. Or do you feel like it's more like a wine that you've perhaps tried from Germany or Austria? These are the sort of questions that you want to ask yourself. Don't get hung up on, oh, I don't know enough about soil types or terroir or climate. Just think about your palate memory, and that's really going to help lead you into the right direction. So you've got an idea for a grape in mind. Do you now have an idea for a country? Discuss amongst yourselves and have a quick chat, see what other people are saying. And if you feel like you're wrong, you can steal their ideas. I think it's French. French. Could be, could be. Oh, I'm vibing Italy. I'm vibing Italy for both of them. Nah. Mm, see. There are also a couple of things that you want to remember to not do during a wine tasting. One of them is the rule, don't be a dick. Being a dick is when you laugh at someone for calling out something or make them feel a little bit unappreciated for being part of this. Here's an example. Hmm, what grape do you think it is? It might be a Swedish Chardonnay. That's being a dick. Don't be like that. Another thing that sometimes people do during blind tasting is to not say anything. Really, even if you're a complete novice, have a go, it's all fun. Don't be the person who does this. No, no, no. And it's also important to not be a spoil sport like this. Oh, oh, it says here that, oh, Jeremy. And now on to some of the final questions. We've talked about grape, we've talked about country. These are really what your goals should be. Can you have an educated guess about the grape and the country this is from? If you can, share it with the group now. It's okay, hit pause, I'll wait. You've all had a nice chat about what the grape and the country could be. Hopefully it's not ended up in any fistfights or anyone being a dick. Remember, if you're not sure what being a dick is, just have a look in the part before and have a little reminder. We've talked about grapes, we've talked about country. Does anyone want to take it any further? How about if we go for region? You've got a country in mind, maybe you're thinking France. Is this from the Loire? Is this from Beaujolais? Is this from Burgundy? If we're talking Austria, are we talking Styria? Or are we talking Burgenland? If we're in Italy, are we north or are we south? Have a think a little bit about the climates of how these countries act and how that palate memory that you have is bringing you back to other wines that you've tried. Remember, it's all about palate memory. It's not so much about climates, soil types and terroir, which you're not expected to know. If you do know, great, you should be able to nail this one. Go on, go on, nail it. Go on, wine nerd, call it. Call it, call it! There's been a few um, challenging moments during blind tastings before. I'm fine, I'm fine. So we've now talked about region. Who wants to take it any further? Do you have a producer that you know in this region? Remember, all of the wines that you might find from morenaturalwine.com, you can find on morenaturalwine.com. 
So that might be a clue if you want to kind of take some information in some way. Remember the price point as well. I think it's fair to ask whoever bought this wine how much it costs because we have a range of 12 different mystery bottles on morenaturalwine.com ranging from 14 euros 50 all the way to 36 euros. And actually that price point might give you a little hint about where the wine could be from. So now's the time to actually egg on the person who got the mystery bottle. Hey, dude, how much did it cost? See what they say. Are they going to give away any answers? If they're not, maybe they're hiding something. Maybe they know something that you don't. Are they really your friend? Just saying. Just saying. Okay, guys, now that you've talked about grape, country, region, and the possible producer that this could be from, I think you're ready to do the big reveal. Remember, when you're doing a reveal, make sure that every single person in the tasting has at least had a little punt at it. Doesn't matter how far off it is, it's all about fun. And this is where you could rip off the bottle, which I'm not gonna do here, because then I'll be giving away one of the bottles of wine. But rip it with style or with elegance, depending on your character and how many other bottles you've had that night. Enjoy it, and then you can go to the website and look it up and find out some more information. Wow, what a great idea that is. I wish all companies were like morenaturalwine.com. Remember, if you like this video and you've not yet tried a mystery bottle, you can order them on, what's the website called again? Oh, morenaturalwine.com. And if you've watched this video because you've bought one of our mystery bottles, good on you, we like you, you're great. And remember, if you've bought one of these bottles on morenaturalwine.com, there are 12 to choose from, so you might wanna try another one. You could get a whole set. Don't worry, we, we can send them to you. You can always pop us a message if you want any information or if you want a specific range of mystery bottles wrapped custom made for you. That sounds like one hell of a party. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please do give this uh, video a like and subscribe or whatever all the other YouTubers do. Like they, they point down there and they say, hey, subscribe here before they give you any information and we're doing it at the very end. So, so dumb. But yeah, I think there's some sort of a like and subscribe thing. Do, do that or something.